it's me here with another video and what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of quickly review this theory that has been going on about the year 2030 and I saw a video today from one of the channels that I really do love and what he had to say about the year 2030 I thought was really compelling but I wanted to test it against scripture and I want to just share with you guys my findings um, because I'm not finding things to drive for me and if and if you found something differently please comment and help me out because right now it's not working out for me but my thing is I find these prophecy theories to be compelling sometimes but compelling doesn't mean anything if it doesn't check out with what we know from scripture and that is my measuring stick about whether or not we should really give even seemingly com compelling theories any weight right so let's just dive right in. Okay, so based on the 2030 theory, the theory is that 2030 is going to be the end of the 17th week of Daniel, right? We're in 2023, seven years from now will be 2030, and that ends the 70th week of Daniel, right? That's the theory. And there's some, some math that kind of makes that compelling. Okay, so for example, we have that from 30 AD is approximately when they say that Christ was crucified, right? And when you add 40 years to that, you come up to 70 AD, right? And there's a prophecy that gives us um, this 40 years, right? And I think it's in Jeremiah, maybe. Jeremiah, I think. is either in Jer Jeremiah, Ezekiel, or Zechariah, one of the two. But anyway, um, in the video, he has it, and maybe I'll link the video in the description box. But this is not me trying to call him out because I left a message on his channel asking for, for clarification and maybe for him to help me find where I'm getting it wrong. So, so you have 40 years, 40 is a year, is the number of transition, right? <coughs> so, if you add 30 plus 40, you come to 70 AD. <coughs> so, from the time that Christ was crucified to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD was 40 years, right? <coughs> and in his theory, grab some water real quick. In his theory, he does two things. He, he talks about another prophecy where God says that if Israel is still in unbelief, he is going to multiply their iniquity by seven. And he says it like four times, right? So he has taken 40 and he has multiplied it by seven, which gets you 280 and then multiplied it again by 70, by seven, which gets you 960, right? Year for a day. So it's going to end up being years. And when you add, he used 40 coming from here as his starting number. And when you add um, 70 AD plus 1,960 years, you come out to the year of 2030 AD. And that sounds really compelling to me, honestly. I'm just going to be honest. It does. And from 2030, counting from 70 AD to 2030, however you want to do it, or from 2030 and counting backward to 70 AD, 40 jubilees are between these two years. I think that's pretty compelling. And that is if you are using a 49-year jubilee cycle, okay? A jubilee is 49 years, all right? The 50th year is inclusive, at least in the way that I'm doing this. That's the way that I'm doing it, okay? So I'm like, okay, so let me, like, let me test that theory against what we know about scripture. But let's quickly make a review for those of you who may not be so familiar with these things, okay? So now, what is important about 30 AD? Well, we just said that in 30 AD, Christ was crucified. So according to Daniel, it says the Messiah was cut off. That means he would have been cut off in 30 AD, according to this theory, okay? There have been other arguments that it's 27 AD or maybe 33 AD. For the sake of this particular theory, he uses 30 AD, right? To, that's the only way this math up here works, right? Well, according to Daniel, the Messiah is cut off in the 69th week, right? Yes, yeah, 7 plus 62 is 69, in the 70th week of Daniel. So that means 30 AD, if that's the year that the Messiah was crucified, I, I, AKA cut off, that means 30 AD has to be within the 69th week, right? Yes. Okay. So now, the 70 week prophecy of Daniel, and remember he says that there are 70 weeks decreed for your people. 
that's 70 times seven. Well, if you do 70 times seven years, that's 70 times seven years, you get 490 years. So that's equivalent to 10 Jubilees. Within 490 years, you'll have 70 weeks or 10 Jubilees. So every grouping of 490 is basically 10 Jubilees, right? And God deals with, it deals with Israel in these groupings of 490 years. And for the most part, it is never broken. I have a video on the exceptions, okay? But for the most part, it is rolling, like a rolling calendar of seven, of cycles of seven, okay? For Israel, not for the Gentiles. Okay, so now, another way to think about this is to say that where we are today, 483 of these 490 years have passed. And we're waiting for seven years more because we have one week left and there are seven years in one week. Right? So 483 plus seven will give us our four, our full 490 years. But the Messiah was cut off in the 69th week. So that means there's one week left to get to 70. And there's seven years in one week. Understand that? Okay. So in our prophecy, only 483 years have passed. Another way to look at this is to say, remember we said that within this 490 years is 10 Jubilees. So another way to say this is that nine jubilees and six weeks have passed. Each week in a jubilee has, um, hold on, each jubilee has seven weeks. If this is a jubilee, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks of seven years, right? And so we says nine full jubilees have passed plus six weeks of the 10th Jubilee. And we're waiting for one week more to complete the 10th Jubilee. And then we will have a full 10, right? Because there are 10 Jubilees within 490 years. Nine Jubilees and six weeks have passed. One week more will make one full Jubilee giving us 10. Understand that? That's another way to say it. And then the final way to say it is that 69 weeks have passed and we're waiting for one week more to give us our 70 weeks, our 70 weeks, okay? You can look at it in either way, but depending on which prophecy you're reading determines which way you're going to look at it, okay? Because the previous study that we did on Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, um, he looked at it in terms of 10, ten Jubilees, okay? Right? And then Daniel talks about it in terms of 70 weeks, Okay. All right. So now that gives us some, we can make some assumptions by that, right? We can see where we are on the calendar. How, how, how do we do that? So we know, according to the theory, what he's saying is that 2030, the year 2030 is the seventh week it's the, it's the last year in the final week of Daniel. Let's say if this was our 70th week of Daniel and the last week is the 70th one. So if this is the 70th week, then this is the 69th, the 68, 67, 66, 65, and 64, right? And these have gone forth already and we're waiting for this one. So let's say this is our week of Daniel just for the sake of what I'm about to say. 2030 would be here. A Jubilee cycle has 49 years. And 2030 would be the 49th year in that Jubilee cycle. This will be our 10th Jubilee that will be getting finished out. And he's saying 2030 would be right here. Okay? That's what he's saying. Now, another thing. You can take 2030 and you can sub subtract... 49 Jubilees from that 40 times, right? And you're going to come to 70 AD, which is, which is right here. So basically what he's saying is that 2030 and the year 70 AD, they both will land in their particular Jubilee right here on the 49th year. Okay, does that make sense?
That's that's what this theory is putting forth, right? And you can do it in a spreadsheet and and, and work it backwards. That's what that's that's the way it works out. And I and I did just that. So just go with me, okay? So in the future, when the 2030th year comes, when year 2030 comes, it will be the 49th Jubilee. Right? And then 70 AD will land in its Jubilee. In the past, it has landed on um, let's say this was that the Jubilee for that particular year, 70 AD, it would land in the same spot on the 49th year. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So now, so what that means is that we can work backwards to see if what we know about scripture holds true. So if we know that 70 AD is going to land right here, let's pretend that this is our Jubilee that has 70 AD in it. That is right here in the 49th year of this, of its Jubilee. Well, it's only a matter of two, two Jubilees to get us to 30 AD when Christ would have been crucified, right? Because two Jubilees is approximately 98 years, right? So it only takes two of them to make your point. So counting from 70 AD backwards, and we're pretending as if we've got 40 of these to count backwards from, but we only need this, this many because we figured that the math holds true. So there's no need to do it 40 times. We only need the two that are relevant, right? I hope that makes sense for you math whizzes out there. <laughs> okay, so if this is our 70 AD, we just count it backwards, add our numbers backwards, right? To get to 30 AD, right? So if 70 AD, according to his theory, would be here in the 49th week of its Jubilee, of the Jubilee that it's in, we can count backwards 40 years to 30 AD. And it lands us right here. Okay, see that? So that means Christ was cut off in 30 AD. But what did I just say? I said that according to Daniel, Christ is cut off in the 69th week. Would this be the 69th week? Let's count. If this was the last week of Daniel... And the one that we're waiting for, that means the 69th week is the prior week. So that means 30 AD would have to be here. Right? Yes. Let's take out the, we know there's a gap between this time frame. It doesn't matter. The final week of Daniel is the last week in the Jubilee cycle. And Christ was crucified the week prior, pretending that there's no gap of time. We know we know about the, the time of grace between here, right? Let's take that out. The 69th week is here when Christ is crucified, according to Daniel. So our 30 AD would need to be here, and it's not. This is the 70th week. This would be like the 70th week, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65. It's, it's in the 65th week. It's too early. So according to my calculations, that theory just doesn't hold with uh, if, if we apply scripture to it. Comment if I'm doing this wrong, okay? But from what I could tell, that would not be right, okay? This is another way to look at it. Okay, so we just said that one Jubilee has seven weeks, right? And Christ, his birth, his ministry, his coming, remember our last study, was in the 10th Jubilee, right? The 10th Jubilee in the 70th week of Daniel prophecy, right? Because in that prophecy, that 490-year prophecy, there are 10 Jubilees. And the 10th one is when Christ was born, when he had his ministry, when he was crucified, when he went into heaven. All of it happened within the 10th Jubilee. So let's say this is the 10th Jubilee, right? So he would have been born in the first week. His ministry, if we count approximately 30 years, would have been about here in the 69th week. And he would have had approximately a three-year ministry and would have been cut off maybe in the middle of the week, right? Somewhere in this week, he would have been, been crucified, right? So this is our 69th week. But they've got 30 AD here. And... And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. 
The final week is the seventh week in this cycle. Him being cut off is the sixth week in this cycle, in this 10th Jubilee cycle. But here they have it in the second week, according to the 2030 theory. See how that doesn't fit? That's two ways to look at it. You can count from the 64th week to the 70th week, knowing that Christ was crucified in the 69th. Or you can look at it to say that, well, whatever Jubilee it is, it has to be at least in that sixth one, that sixth week, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. This would be the 69th week. It is the sixth week in this Jubilee cycle. It's the 69th week in the entire 70 week prophecy, right? This will be the 70th one, right? Either way, that doesn't, this doesn't fit. Doesn't fit no matter how you look at it, right? Do you see that? Where am I wrong, guys? Fix me if I'm doing something wrong, right? To me, it doesn't fit. So what we learned in our old, in the previous study was that Christ would have been born this week. Counting 30 days, ministry, death, burial, resurrection, all that would be here. 69th week. And then we have our time of grace right after that. And we're waiting for this last week. So right now we're still in the time of grace. Understand that? Let me know if I'm doing this wrong, guys. Okay. <laughs> I have like did this every way. And, and I even said, okay, if we were to shift 30 AD around a little bit, let's, let's move, let's shift this number 30 AD up, right? And let's look at it up here. All right. So I said, let's say this is our 30 AD, right? And this is our 69th week of Daniel, right? The 30 AD, you know, it, it can be anywhere on the week, right? We don't know. Scripture doesn't give us exactly where in the 69th week that 30 AD lands, okay? It could be here. It could be any one of these days, right? But it gives us a range to work with. So it can't be any earlier than this and it can't be any later than this, right? And so, you know, if we said our 30 AD was here, then it will put our 70 AD like right there. And then you can just keep shifting a day. If, if it was here, then we'll put our, I mean, if our 30 AD was here, we'll put our 70 AD here. If our 30 AD was here, it will put our 70 AD here. And you can just shift it and play with it. But we can't have 30 AD any further than this, right? Because we're still waiting on this week. Does it make sense? So it just, that prophecy just doesn't fly to me. If I'm doing something wrong, let me know. And, and honestly, shifting the day of 30 AD during this week, any time during this week, it doesn't really give any significance to me to where 70 AD lands, right? It'll, it can only be from here to three, four, five, six, seven. It has to be somewhere between here and here, somewhere, you know, given this, right? It will shift. That doesn't tell me anything compelling. And, you know, one thing I will say about this is this is why I feel like we have to be careful about trying to calculate these things using dates, because I just don't think it works, you know, um, and not when and let me let me say not dates. But what, what I mean by that is not using like Gregorian day, like the Gregorian years. You know what I'm saying? I, I just find that so problematic for a couple of reasons. OK. Even though we know here, which I find this bit to be compelling, is 1,960 years. But how can we say that from 70, uh, 40 years, which would be 70 AD, to 2030 is exactly 1,960 years? Like if we were to count, we can't say that. Even though this math works out, assuming that there have been no changes to our, our calendar, but we know there has been. So even though this math in a perfect world comes out to 1,960 years, what if in actuality, because of all the changes that have been made to the calendar by co coming and going empires, that actually 2,000 years have passed in reality? Or perhaps only 1920 years have passed in reality. Because there have been some empires who have added months to the calendar. There was a time when there were eight years in the in, in eight days in the week. 
uh, there were times when they just moved the date by uh, several days, just arbitrarily for whatever reasons they needed to line it up with the seasons or whatever. So we can't say that it's exactly 1,960 years to the day. We just can't say that, right? So I'm like, uh, as compelling as it is, and as much as I would love for this to like work out, as far as I can tell, it does not, okay? So I think our better way to calculate is not to do it like this, trying to use math and dates because our days have been tampered with too much, right? The better way is to look to scripture and to look to those events that scripture talks to us about, right? Those things that must take place, those marker events. We, are, we should look for those things, right? We should be looking for a temple. We should be looking for an agreement, like some type of peace agreement between Israel and other countries, either a group of countries or countries. We, we should be looking for a, a, a man of sin. Well, we know him to be the man of sin, but some man to, you know, who to represent either a country or a group of countries that will enter into some kind of peace agreement with Israel. We should be looking for those things, right? We should be looking um, to the um, the the environment or the atmosphere, the political and um, environment of, uh, or even international like um, environment of Israel. We should be looking to current events, not trying to figure stuff out like this in order to like be accurate. You know what I'm saying? Because if this ends. The, if 2030 were to end the, the year, of the, the um, final week of Daniel, okay, seven, seven years before that will put us in what? 2023. And according to a lot of people, they expect the rapture to be this year. I mean, by golly, I would love that to be. But guess what we don't have? No temple to desecrate. <laughs> right? We have no temple to desecrate. None. How is that possible? Right, guys? You know, and, 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 and we know that the way I would calculate this would be that since I don't believe that there, there's a rapture prior to a seven year tribulation, we, we believe that the tribulation is three and a half years. So we still would have from this 2023, three and a half years to have to pass. So we've got three and a half years of time to at least be looking for events to ha to happen if this 2030 date is true, right? But even still, in, in my calculation, the math just doesn't work, right? For me, it just doesn't work, right? It would be nice, but it just doesn't work, <laughs> right? You know, and, and so... Uh, if you want to try to figure out the date, like a proper date, you know, trying to use the same concept that they have, the best way to do it is to put 30 AD in the 69th week and then work forward and give yourself the range of the week. So like, let's say, let's say this is our 69th week, right? Of Daniel. That means 30 AD can be anywhere here, right? On anywhere here. So that will give you a range of years, right? And you would use that and count forward if, if we're using this same theory. But we have to put 30 AD in its proper place and, and where he has it just doesn't work. All right, that's, that's just my two cents. Hey guys, so I decided to figure out what would happen if we put 30 AD in its proper place, okay? So looking here, in the original 2030 theory of the guy's channel that I was listening to his, he has it here. He's saying that 70 AD is the 49th year in a Jubilee cycle, right? And I'm saying that doesn't work out, right? Because what it does is it puts 30 AD when the Messiah is cut off in week two of this Jubilee cycle. And that's not right because we know based on Daniel, it should be in the 69th week. At least I believe it to be not right. Maybe it doesn't need to be there. If it doesn't, help me understand that rationale. How would that work, right? So it's here in the 60, what, fifth week that would be, right? Doesn't quite work out when we're working backwards, right? I mean, this is taking out the time of grace, right? This is as if things were just flowing through. 
is the way he's his prophecy or at least his theory inputs are are the way that I'm, I'm understanding it right it just when you work backwards it doesn't work the 20 the 2030 he's he's accounting for a, a time of grace of about 1960 years right and then going backwards right to 30 AD which is his beginning inputs but his 30 AD having 2030 also being in the 49th uh, year of its jubilee cycle working backwards doesn't right doesn't work right because it has 30 AD here right and I'm saying that that just doesn't work all right now if we put 30 AD in its proper place then we can work forward to see instead of 2030 is there a different year right even though I don't like the idea of doing it this way I'm just like let's just see where it puts us you know just for the sake of conversation right okay so then the 69th week, let's say if this is our 70th week, our 70 week, the end of our 70 week prophecy, right? With this being our last week and Christ being cut off in the 69th week, which is here, right? Then the 30 AD of his death, his crucifixion can be any time on this 70th week, right? We're going to give it that range at least. I would not say that it was the very first year because I think he would have probably began his ministry in the, but just for the sake of discussion, we're going to give a range, right? It can be anywhere in the 69th week, but 69th week is our, for this particular experiment, I guess you can say, it is our cutoff dates. We can't go be earlier than it and we can't go after that. It'll give us a seven a seven year range, right? As far as a, a, a year or a day, um, a date, a year. We're going for a year, right? So with 38 D being here, it will make our 49th year 43 AD and we can use that as our input instead of um, or we could even use 92 but I want to go as early as we can so we're going to use 43 AD right um, he he used <laughs> I guess he used 30 AD which doesn't work uh, anyway we're, we're going to go with this for the sake of computation right it needs to be in a 49th year it needs to be a year that's in the 49th year 92 will automatically get picked up okay so I went over here and I'll, if you go down, I started with 43 right here. See, here's 92. So 43 plus 49, right? This is the 49th year in that Jubilee cycle. And we're going to add 49 more years to get to 92, which is the 49th year in that Jubilee cycle. We're going to add 49 years to it. Year 141 is the is the 49th year in its jubilee cycle right and we're going to go forward 40 jubilees right beginning in 43 going forward 40 jubilees right um so that gets us to 2052 with our 30 ad being in year one of the 69th week okay that's what we're doing see that now i said let's give us a range so we would shift it over one year, right? So if we go here and we were to shift 30 AD over and move it here, that would move 42, year 42 AD there instead of 43. And we would use 42 AD as our input, right? As our beginning input, right? And I did that twice. So I shifted it once, then I shifted it twice. So I moved 42 AD there and shifted in a third time, moved 41 AD there as our input over here, right? So going down, you can see that I have 43, 42, and then 41, and then I move forward 40 jubilees, all right? Counting forward 49 um, jubilees, you know, 40 jubilees, which are 49, okay? 49 years. So then with our 30 AD being in the first year of the 69th week, it brings us to 2052 instead of 2030. And then moving it over to the second year in the 69th week, it puts us to 2051 and moving it over to the third year in the 69th week, it puts us to year 2050 and so on and so forth. And so I already just did the math and worked it out. Right. So that means it would go from 2052, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, and 58. That's our seven year range, right? Moving 30 AD along the 69th week at the earliest, it could be 2052 using his logic. And at the latest, it would be 2058. You see that? So he, he's potentially off by like 20 years, 20 plus years. You see that? 
And so help me. Maybe I'm not looking at this the right way, right? And this is not me trying to attack him because I actually love his channel. He has some very compelling information there. But I like for things to work out with the Bible, right? And this one just is, is jiving to me. Maybe he doesn't need to. Maybe I'm thinking too deep about this. But if you've got a comment on this and you've done this math and you've worked this out and it's worked out for you, I would love to, you know, link me a video, leave me, leave me something, but let it be as it relates to this. Because if this doesn't work out, then we're just blowing smoke, right? 2030 doesn't work. It just doesn't, right? And to me, it would make more sense if we were looking at more like 20. 52 or 2053, you know, I mean, even 2055, one thing I was looking at here is that, oops, if we go up, um, I need to go over and up and I think I went over too fast. Let me see. Went over too many. Okay. So one thing I was saying is, you know, I'm, I'm a girl who likes the middle of the week time frame, right? The fourth year, one, two, three, four, right? 33 AD is in the middle. And I know that there are some scholars who, who would say they would put Christ's crucifixion as late as like 33 AD and as early as like 27 AD, right? 33 is a good number. <laughs> to me, it's a good number, right? And the fact that it's in the middle of the week, yeah, what does that mean? I, I don't know. But there, there's other numbers we could potentially play around with there, right? So anyway, um, just some food for thought. I'm going to play with some other things too to see if I come up with anything else that I find to be more compelling. But weigh in, please. I would love to know your thoughts. All right. Bye to the next one.